Now, as well as the superstars, the eel, that are up here, we've got some fish too, and they occupy specific places, and Rosie knows all about that. Yeah, well, we were lucky enough here to catch some common bullies in our traps. The majority of fish that you'll find in these small streams is the right. upland bully. Right. They have little spots on their cheeks. We just looked at these ones. They've got little, like, whiskers on their cheeks. So the, the spotting of the pigmentation appears to be like that. Um, now, those are, that is uh, primary differentiation, that it's easy to tell the difference, you know, when you're looking at the two, two species. Um, further down, right down near the sea, there are commons again, and also giant bullies and uh, magnificent little fish, big fat things, mm -hmm. um, quite dark. And then we've also got the blue, um, the blue girls, which are also in down and around um, the lower reaches of the river. Some of them are, you know, quite neat to look at. They're not just little fish. These are probably the plainest. Oh, okay, the lot. okay. So mm. we may see some different types of bully when we get. And they can get here. quite um, pigmented when they're breeding too. Uh, okay. You get different pigmentation on them. Here we've got a native species, but quite possibly a native out of its normal home range. They're up in here around the lakes and around the, uh, in this outlet stream. Yeah. Um, but it's actually quite possible that they're brought in here um, as a bait species right. for fishing. So they're natives, but not necessarily where they should be. They should be much nearer the sea. Well, that's where you generally find common bullies is down in the well, How about we, we head downstream and see what we can find further downstream? Yeah, let's go and um, have a look in a, um, you know, a nice uh, running stream rather than more of this still water. We'll find different fish altogether there. Lovely. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, we've come to the Stour River and we're a bit nearer the sea than we were earlier and um, Rosie and Wendy have been fishing with electric fishing gear. What have you found, Rosie? Yeah, well, um, here we've got a up, couple of upland bullies in contrast to the common bullies that we saw before. Mm. And we've got a, what's known as a Canterbury Galaxid or a Galaxus vulgaris. Right. So they are spread fairly broadly, the Canterbury Galaxids along the east coast of the South Island here, um, and particularly in these sort of areas, and this is sort of prime habitat, I thought that we might get something like that here. We've got a lovely um, forested stream further up. Um, it's obviously got good velocity, so it's got lots of lovely aerated, fresh, clean water and these big boulders yeah, providing refuge and habitat. Yeah, this is a... A really lovely stream. Right now, very quickly point out to us how you can tell the difference so quickly, because you immediately said, yes, we've got a galaxy. Yeah, so um, the galaxies are named after the fact that they've got lots of little spots on their bodies, um, and whoever first sort of thought of naming them thought that they look like lots of little stars, so oh. therefore hence they're called galaxies. There are about 20 species of galaxid. Um, the Canterbury is a non-migratory, so it's spawning locally and is, you know, it completes its life cycle locally, whereas a number of them are travelling down to the sea okay. and spawning back in, just like the eel, although not spawning so far off as the eel does, but still they undergo, they undergo that sure. part of their life cycle, which means that... For, Important habitat all the way from here to the sea is is important for maintaining them. That connection we talked about this morning for the eels. Yeah. Indeed. Well, a very successful day's fishing. Very well done, Rosie. Yeah. Yeah.